Hello, welcome back. Um, so you probably saw from the title of the video that it's, it's going to be about Harry Potter and that whole Harry Potter world, and why it's really, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter would not be a good place to live in. Um, now most videos at this point would start talking about kind of the magic of the world and how dangerous it is and stuff like that. Um, those I consider to be devices of, of the novel, of the storytelling, and really they have nothing to do with this video. So we're, we're going to talk more about um, kind of this, the philosophical reasons why it would not be a good idea to live in Harry, the Harry Potter world. Um, so first off, let me tell you the origins of why I'm doing this video. So about a year or so ago, um, a, a political pundit named uh, Piers Morgan was on the Bill Maher show, and um, they had been talking about some of uh, President uh, Trump's policies and so on. They started talking about his uh, immigration policy. This was shortly after he had done a uh, tra done the travel ban, and there's a lot of debate and issue over it. And on the Bill Maher show, they uh, stated they called it the uh, Muslim ban, and Piers Morgan stopped them and corrected them and said, well, it's not really a Muslim ban, it's an immigration ban. Um, and later, he would explain that uh, the reason he felt it important to kind of, to correct it, change it from Muslim ban to immigration ban, was that they'd just been talking about, you know, being honest, politicians being honest and so on, he felt it was important that they be as, well, not just honest, but accurate, as accurate as possible. And he felt that um, immigration ban was a more accurate description than Muslim ban, for his own reasons. Uh, the response was actually very striking. Um, and another uh, person at Bill Maher's table uh, stated, and this is a, a balderized uh, version of what he said, he said F you, essentially to him, and just everyone started ripping on Piers Morgan. Um, which is actually kind of ironic because for the most part Piers Morgan agreed with their uh, political ideologies, so it, it was kind of a really odd moment. Now, um, what happened later was that uh, J.K. Rowling tweeted out that um, she was very happy when she said, when the guy had said F you, she actually wrote out the actual word. I, I don't swear very much in public, <laughs> so far as you know. Anyway, <clears throat> so yeah, she, she actually wrote out the word, which was kind of shocking because, you know, yeah, you know, somebody who writes a kid's book that's suddenly writing out a swear word is just, it, it's a little weird and off and so on. Regardless, um, so she, she wrote that out and uh, did that, and, you know, there started to be a lot of controversy with many of her tweets and many of the things she said. And one of the things that she later said, I believe is an offshoot of this initial conversation, but it could have been on a, a different topic, but she had challenged someone. She, she said that they really need to study the, the book, of, the Harry Potter books, and take their lessons from the Harry Potter world. This was... This point of view was pretty well mocked by a lot of people, but I think it, it, it's actually a valid point. A lot of fiction creates uh, what we shall call utopias and could easily serve as an example for our own society. Uh, Ray Bradbury actually wrote a book on that specific topic of you know, fictional utopias becoming the reality. Well, not a book, a short story. I, I, I need to be as accurate as possible. Um, Anyway, so she, she had tweeted this, and so just the other day I actually got thinking back to this and thinking a little bit about this, and uh, I did come to the conclusion that no, this is not Harry Potter, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter is would not be a good place to live and probably wouldn't be a good example to, um, to base our society on. Um, so, but before, before I explain why I think this, I'm going to just go ahead and put a couple of... Um, Caveats, caveats, caveats. I always pronounce that word wrong. I, I, I read more than I speak, so I, I know a lot of words, but I don't always know how to pronounce them. Uh, regardless, I do like the Harry Potter books. I, I did enjoy them. I think uh, four of the seven books are excellent. Uh, in saying seven books, I am counting um, Deathly Hollows as one book, not two, which I think is how it's initially intended anyway. Uh, regardless, Four of the seven, I think, are really, really good. Um, won't get into details on that, because that's just pure literary criticism right there, which is not what the video is about. And secondly, um, 
politically speaking, I, I am a nonpartisan independent. Um, basically, that means I judge each um, political ideology based upon its merits as opposed to based on party politics or any party lines, anything like that. So um, in, when I started thinking about the structure and how the Wizarding World of Harry Potter really worked and functioned, I actually uh, found a, a comparable point in history to compare it to, and that would be the early, early uh, 20th century. And um, to kind of explain it, we're, we're going to go back to a concept, the concept of eugenics. Um, I've talked about it before. Uh, simply defined, eugenics is the belief that human beings can be bred in the same way that racehorses can be bred. This is actually a pretty popular idea even now. I mean, just for the simple reason that anyone who has kids wants their kids to do better than they would, and if we can somehow give them an advantage, you know, we, we want to give our children an advantage. And that's really kind of the core of eugenics right there, giving our children an advantage. But part of the problem with, with that came about because of, not because of eugenics, but because of an interpretation of eugenics, was that um, it was used to justify racism. Um, and it was based on an erroneous belief that a certain race, a certain group of people, are superior to all other groups of people. Um, eugenically speaking, there doesn't really seem to be much justification for that, but there's a belief that Caucasian or white people were superior to everyone else. This was very common in, in the early part of the 20th century. What's not commonly known, however, when we look back on it, and this is obviously wrong, I think I've said it before, but I'll reiterate, obviously a wrong belief. So what's not commonly known or recognized at this point, uh, at least when we look back on it, is that there wasn't a hatred for people who were inferior for the most part. There was something that some people might call uh, worse than that. There was pity. Um, it wasn't, uh, from their point of view, it wasn't the inferior person's fault that they were inferior. They, they can't help being born that way. And so they're more objects to be pitied than um, people to be hated. Now, um, Nazis uh, of that time period took the eugenics debate and certain other philosophical writings, such as Nietzsche's, to an extreme level that it was never intended to go. They actively hated people, and they would, um, yeah, they hated people, anyone who was inferior, and, you know, if it was, it's, it's, it, from their point of view, killing someone who was inferior didn't actually count as killing a person. It, it, it's like smashing a bug. Now, these, all, these entire points of view are completely wrong. I just want to reiterate that very wrong point of view there. So this compares disturbingly directly to the Harry Potter world, specifically the line divided in Harry Potter between the people who can do magic and the people who can't do magic. There's even terminology for people who can't do magic, and that's muggles, which is essentially the equivalent of saying inferior or barbaric, or really you can throw any metaphor there. Historically speaking, it's the exact same. And the reaction, now, the average person was like uh, the average racist person in early 20th century. They don't hate muggles, but they're more objects to be pitied. And, you know, they can't, obviously muggles can't handle the same things that magic users can handle. They can't handle any knowledge of magic. They can't handle knowing all the magical stuff that happens. And so they go to, they take it to a level that wasn't taken in the 20th century. And essentially it's a form of brainwashing, a magical form of brainwashing where they erase, completely erase a muggle's memory of ever seeing anything magical. And oftentimes in, in the books, this is done over and over again to the same sort of person. Their memories are completely wiped clean, and oftentimes over and over again with no real thought to kind of the, the long-term effects of this. They, they, I, don't recall, I don't know if they actually say, well, it's, it's not a big deal. It's not going to have a long-term effect or not in the books, but I got that. Imp I got the implication that most people thought, not going to be a problem. Um, and this is, you know, treat, and it's, you know, incredibly uh, disingenuous, I think, to people who can't do magic saying, Oh, you can't handle the truth of magic. You're, you're just going to be there. And another interesting aspect is that the muggles we have the most contact with 
are not portrayed very well. They're the Dursleys in the book, and they're basically one one of them, well, of the parents, one is fat, one is thin. Uh, the Their child is, is fat, and they are very bullying. They're very mean, crude, bullying people. They are not nice people, and that's kind of how a lot of muggles are portrayed in it. Not all of them, but it, it that's the main impression we get of muggles throughout the entire book series, is that they are just like this. People who don't do magic are just like this. Um, and it's... Now, now, Voldemort himself would be the equivalent of, of the Nazis. He takes it to an extreme. He doesn't just dislike muggles. He wants to wipe them out. He, he hates them so much, he wants to destroy them. And it's, you know, it, it's that equivalent. But my main concern is with the regular people and their, their dislike of non-magical fo folks, or shall we say distrust and disingenuous belief that they can't handle anything magical. Um, this becomes even more apparent when we have people from magic magical families who um, can't do magic, can't perform magic. These, uh, these people are completely ostracized, and it even mocked and made fun of. And even uh, Ron, who's prob probably one of my favorite characters in the series, uh, laughs when he finds out the janitor at the school is, is one of these people who can't do magic. Um, and he says, it's really not funny, but, you know, since this guy's so mean, well, honestly, yes, that would be a child's response, but honestly, why do you think he's that mean? Why do you think he's so angry? It's, you know, not just that he can't do magic, it's how he's treated by people who can do magic. And it's more or less a serious problem in the book that's never, re never covered, never really looked at or covered. Um, and there, in, in, in view of this, there's some really disturbing things that happen in the Harry Potter books that we kind of, you know, ignore or don't really realize that they're really disturbing. Um, Hermione, uh, in the seventh book, I'm not even going to try to guess which part, part one, part two, it kind of blends together for me, uh, mentions that she um, uh, basically erased her parents' memory of her to protect them. And, you know, when you look at the book, you say, okay, yeah, that's that, that's a good sacrifice on her part. That's very logical that she would do that. But then you think about it, it's like, it's a little bit disturbing, you know, to have your child come in and brainwash you to believe that they never existed. That's really very, very disturbing ideas and concepts. And the reason I say this would be a very bad world to live in is, you know, think about it. I would not want to live on either side. I would not want to be a non-magical person in this world because, you know, this world could actually exist around us and we've just forgotten. And that's kind of the scary part about it. It makes it makes the entire book series feel more like a horror series rather than a children's series when you look at it from that point of view. But also, if I was a magic user, you know, this entire attitude and feeling, it's its really a very disturbing one, and I would hate to have been raised like that, to be raised to think that, oh, these people are inferior to me, but, oh, we, we shouldn't hate them for being inferior. We should just, you know, we should pity them. We should feel sorry for them. And that's just, it's not a good attitude to have, and it's very similar to the you know, to wrap things up, it, it is similar to the earliest 20th century, to the eugenics, um, misinterpretation of eugenics, and the racists of that time period. So, um, yeah, uh, just to close out, I did like the books. They were fun, entertaining, enjoyable books, but there are, you know, looking back on them, there are a lot of disturbing things that happen in them. So, anyway, that's, that's my take on why you really shouldn't live in the Harry Potter world. Like and subscribe if you like this, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.